Good evening and welcome to another episode of Pegasus Presents. I'm Lauren Stefanelli, Access Coordinator here at Pegasus. And today we're checking in again with the History Center in Tompkins County, who has moved to their new home. With me is Rod Howe, the Executive Director of the History Center. And he's here to tell us all about the wonderful new mu museum that is pretty much the pride and joy of Tompkins County I'm right now. Welcome, excited. Rod. I'm pretty excited. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. So the last time I talked to you, it was sometime in the fall. It was before the move. You were looking for volunteers to help you pack, and you were planning like some kind of little caravan of boxes across <clears> town, <throat> and the Tommy plane was going to fly in the air, and then it was going to move into your museum. And, and okay, it's all so happened. Now, now here we are. The yeah. museum opened in May, and, and now it's really there. So tell us about, tell us about the move. You know, it's now a blur, uh, but I will say it was a tremendous amount of work that could only have happened with volunteers. We have so many collections and archives. I can't tell you how many boxes had to be packed carefully and moved. Uh, so I want to thank Donna Eschenbrenner and her band of volunteers. I, I, I really don't know how they did it, but they did. And the library is completely up and running. Don't go in our basement. We still have plenty of unpacking to do. Uh, but the museum is ready for you to come and visit. I saw, uh, there, there's a few images from, uh, that, that I've seen of the packing and the boxes mm -hmm. and the move and all this kind of stuff and the space. Did everything really come out the way you designed it? I mean, you talked, you and the partners all talked in the fall about what you imagined. Did it come true? It did. You know, Jennifer Tavares is the one who put the word spectacular in the mix. And People agree that the space is pretty spectacular. So I think it's exceeding our expectations. As I say, the History Center still has some work to do, but you wouldn't necessarily know that when you come into the exhibit hall. Well, we visited with Rod at the brand new Tompkins Center for History and Culture just today, and he gave us a little tour around. So rather than talking about something that you haven't seen, let's go take a look. Welcome to the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. We're standing in the atrium. I'm encouraging people to call it the Tompkins Center. Uh, in the atrium, you will find a few things. There is the donor wall. There is one of our exhibit towers. This will change every four months. The current exhibit is on the Cuga Nation, the Gagahono, uh, which covers past, present, and future. We have partners uh, mentioned on the wall over there. There's 12 partners plus two additional entities uh, that are involved, the uh, Latino Civic Association and the Ithaca Festival. There's a great kiosk where you can go and find out what's happening in the building and around the county. You can find out about each of the partners and there's a great Twitter feed. And we're standing in the visitor center. Uh, Danielle is here to answer questions as the public comes in and there's a great retail space here. So we encourage the public to come and learn about all the things they can do in Tompkins County as visitors, but also do some shopping. So this is the Ithaca College Gallery. It's operated by the Community Arts Partnership where every month there's a new art show up. This new show just went up. So First Friday Gallery Nights are a great opportunity to come and see the new arts uh, in the Ithaca College Gallery. We're now in the exhibit hall of the History Center. So there are two display cases you first come in. For the first opening, we are talking about Tompkins Trust Company, its history, and the Tompkins County Bicentennial. And of course, the Tommy plane is the main artifact. I hope many of you got a chance to see the plane fly last September, uh, but you can learn all about the story of the Tommy plane and our history of entrepreneurship and innovation by checking the kiosk in, the, in front of the plane. This is another part of the exhibit hall. Uh, this is a tremendous animation about our indigenous history, very stylized. I encourage everyone to take the two and a half minutes to watch it. We're, by the way, we are now joined by the Ithaca Kitty. If you don't know the story about the Ithaca Kitty, please ask any of us. When you go uh, through that round hole, you are now in the timeline passageway uh, that's been designed for skimmers, swimmers, and divers. We'll unpack that at another show, what it means to be a skimmer, swimmer, or diver, but it's a walk-through timeline. Another feature are these five exhibit towers. For the beginning, we are using PLACE as an acronym, so there's one about people, one about land, one about architecture, one about culture, and one about enterprise. 
Some have drawers, so when you come, make sure you also open up the drawers to see what artifacts are in the drawers. We have hundreds and hundreds of artifacts, but for the new place, we decided to do something very different. We're only putting out a few artifacts on this wall at a time, so you can really focus and learn about them. There's a panel here that describes what you're looking for. We will change these on a regular basis, just as we will with the exhibits in the exhibit towers. This is our children's educational area. It's a nod to the eight square schoolhouse, uh, which fourth graders visit as part of Kids Discover the Trail. So come and enjoy sitting in one of these small desks. We're very excited about the use of this small bank vault as a story vault. You can go in and listen to oral histories, personal narratives, or record your own story. So please come. Uh, go into this small intimate space with a friend and record a story. We love the fact that from the exhibit hall you can see our research library. We hope that you will come and do research uh, in the uh, Cornell Local History Research Library and utilize the Thaler Howe Foundation archives. So please come down and visit us, uh, the History Center in Tompkins County at the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. We have more things going up on the walls over the next month. So please come and bring visitors. Okay, we're back. I hope you really get excited to go down and check this out for yourself. I mean, there's changing exhibits. Every time you go, it's going to be something different. And the best part, the part that I like to tell people about the most is, it's free. It uh, is free. We people, welcome donations. Right, right. right. There were people free. coming in, right, and they're, they're like getting their wallet out. How much right, do I have to pay right. you? And, and, right. and they don't have to pay you. And there's, there's uh, what you can do and can't do. And people are actually encouraged to do things like, oh, you're allowed to have a camera. You're allowed right. to take selfies. There's things that intentionally you're allowed to touch. Yeah, in fact, the Tommy plane has already become what people take a selfie with. So we were able to tell them where they sit on the steps. They have to turn their body just so somebody else is on the other side of the plane, and it kind of looks like you're sitting in the cockpit. Oh, do you have a little white scarf, silk scarf they can put on? Well, we are <laughs> going to get that. The scarf that the pilot wore uh -huh. is actually laying on the plane. So folks who saw the plane fly will remember that white scarf trailing in the wind. Right, and when they're at the museum, they don't have to remember the plane flying. They can actually watch that, right. can't they? Right. On the kiosk, there's videos, because a lot of folks I know had to miss it, but mm -hmm. you can watch it. So, yeah, we, there are so many reasons to come to the Tompkins Center for History and Culture, and certainly the History Center is one of them. Bring your visitors. Uh, it's a great way to orient them to what they can do while they're going to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives them a sense of the history of Ithaca and Tompkins County. And there's so many, as you just saw in the video, components to the exhibit hall mm -hmm. that we're very excited about. So yeah, we the definitely plane, want people. I kind of think of it as, as, as your mastodon, you know, the, the, the RPI, the Museum of the Earth has the big mastodon right. up there. And, uh, and, and the whale, and you guys have the Tommy plane. And Folks will notice, I don't know if it was captured in the footage, there's a teddy bear sitting on the Tommy plane. So we want people to come and find out why is there a teddy bear sitting on the Tommy plane. And for those who know about the Ithaca Kitty, the Ithaca Kitty and the teddy bear are becoming fast friends. <laughs> okay, so I mean, there's all these little secrets. It's not like you can just walk in. In some museums, you walk in, you look around, and then you kind of, okay, I've been there, I've done that, I'm done. But here, there's all these little secrets. There's drawers you pull out. Right. There's the story vault where you can actually contribute to it and tell your own story. And that, that's one of the things that I, I think is really exciting. And using the bank vault makes it look like you're traveling into a time capsule. It's a, kind of amazing. And I probably should explain the comment that I made about swimmers, skimmers, and divers. Mm -hmm. So when you go through the timeline, which is pretty cool, it was two vaults with a door in between. Of course, the architects just I said- I guess you didn't get to keep the money. We did not get to keep the money, unfortunately. Uh, the architect said, well, we'll just take out the door separating the two vaults. Well, it wasn't that easy to do. So, but now you can walk through this amazing timeline. And if you go to a museum and you just want some high points, there's a wall that you can skim. If you're a swimmer and want a few more data points, there's additional information on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. And if you're a diver, there's two kiosks with lots of digital narratives that you can go and hit and learn about different aspects of our county. So it's designed for skimmers, swimmers, and divers. 
Okay. So let's talk about the, the archive and the library. Why, why should people care about that? You know, one of the things, by the way, that I'm very excited about is from the exhibit hall, you mm -hmm. can see into the research library. Yeah, that was we saw not that. the case in the old place. So a lot of people didn't really even know we have this research library. It's the Cornell Local History Research Library. It does give you the visual sense of being multifaceted. And it's it's a larger space than we had before. So people come. And it really looks like a library. It does. And as in fact, to the other what one. I've been surprised about is folks who might be visitors, they're not, their plan was not to come into the library, but they mm -hmm. see all these books. So they'll come into the library and just kind of look at the different books on our bookshelves, which is great. We encourage them to do that. But others may come to do research on genealogy, on their homes, on different topics related to our history in Ithaca and Tompkins County. So there's a whole archives right behind the research library that we bring material to people to help them explore. So one of the things that I think is the most cool about this library is the programs that you've been having the last couple of years and are continuing that allows residents to actually contribute to the library with their own photos of their houses or their ancestors or great grandparents or whatever and, and to make the library that much richer with local history. Sure, and we now have some additional space for the research library. You have to know that the History Center actually lost space by moving to this new Tompkins Center for History and Culture, which we knew. You have the basement. But it's not, uh, and it's not enough space, so we're looking for off-site storage. But the good news is we're planning to be able to keep bringing in material. We were kind of on pause mm -hmm. for a while, but now we're starting to be proactive again, as you say, to suggest to family members uh, that before they start just throwing things out, see if there's something there that contributes mm -hmm. knowledge about our history of Ithaca and Tompkins County. So certainly we want people to talk to Donna Eschenbrenner mm -hmm. about those sort of materials. And, and I know that you have these things that are called, uh, what are they called, History Bees or, or History Forge or oh, something history like Forge that. Oh, History Forge is a very specific initiative where folks have been entering census information. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's that's been a labor of love. Again, volunteers have entered thousands and thousands of the census track information into this History Forge. So you can click on, on the map on History Forge mm -hmm. on a building and learn who lived there in 1890, 1900, 1910, 1920, and oh, 1930. Wow. I mean, it's still being built. And it really is a great research tool. So we just got a, a fairly large federal grant to help us move that particular initiative forward. So we're very excited about the National Archives Records Administration grant that we just got. Oh, so that's terrific. And, and, and I'm sure having the new space makes your ability to do these grants, so the, the fact that you're moving forward and it's modernized and it's bringing in more, more eyeballs, more tourists. That's the hope, that this foundation gives us a better way to attract funding. Well, let's talk about some of your events because your organization has more events than you can shake a stick at. So, and we've but we, I've, we've got your uh, current newsletter here that's got a bunch of events in it. Yeah, and, and I want to make sure that people, it's an electronic newsletter that goes out twice a month. They can go online and sign up to get it or just call us and give us their email address so that you can keep track of what we're All doing. Right. They can also just go to your website and like go to right. find the newsletter and click right. on the PDF of whichever newsletter they Correct. want to look at, right? And but for those if they who, sign up, it'll come right to their inbox. Right. And for those who do want a hard copy, we will send a hard copy out. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, we're happy to do that. You know, before we go into the events, one thing that I'm very excited about is the Ithaca Kitty has become our mascot, uh, also known as Caesar Grimalkin. Uh, and a children's book is being written about the Ithaca Kitty. Rebecca Berry is a local children's author. Uh, so she has written a book, and we're just in the process of shopping it around. So we, the Ithaca Kitty was pretty famous, uh, so we want the Ithaca Kitty to be famous again. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, you see things in the museum that you go, uh, especially for people that are transients that have never heard of them. I saw the Ithaca, a uh, made in Ithaca piano, and of course there's the Ithaca clock company that made all different varieties of clocks and a lot of people and the Tommy Plains made in Ithaca might not realize what kind of a history we've had right. with making all kinds of things. Right. Yep, so come and explore. So some uh, events coming up. Obviously because we have the Tommy Plain, we saw this as an ideal time to put together a regional aviation tour. So it's happening Saturday, July 13th. It's an all-day tour, but folks will visit the Wings of Eagle, uh, the National Soaring Museum, the Glenn Curtis Avi Aviation Museum, and then of course folks will come to the History Center to see the Tommy Plane. 
I, for one, have not been to those other sites, so I'm going on the tour. I'm looking forward to it. So Saturday, July 13th, mm -hmm. just call us, email us, and, and it's we'll on register. Newsletter. It's on the newsletter. Uh, and that's something and, that and we I hope... And I think I read there that's the first time you're doing that, It right? is the first time we're doing it. We want to do more regional tours where we have a piece of the history, but there's a broader mm -hmm. story. So I I'm, I'm hope that uh, folks who are listening to this will come on the tour. And it says all-inclusive adventure. Does that mean it's guided and somebody knowledgeable is going to explain things at, to you? At each not of the museums. You're not just let out of the right. bus at, and told, okay, you're at Hammondsport. Right. Go find, go find out stuff. We'll see you in an hour. At each of the sites, there will be a, a person talking specifically about. So, for instance, we have Don Funk, mm -hmm. who's extremely knowledgeable about the Tommy plane. So he'll be there to answer all the questions that people might have about the Tommy plane. So there's that. Um, we've, we've talked about the library, but we've had, we have this nice partnership with Historic Ithaca, mm -hmm. where Christine O'Malley is there every other week on Tuesdays from 1 to 4 if people come in and have specific questions about their houses mm -hmm. or architectural history. So we love this partnership with the Research Library and Historic So is Ithaca. it walk-in? It is walk-in. They don't have to make an appointment. The next date that Christine will be there will be July 23rd and that will be one to four. And, and then speaking it's every of other walk week. in and speaking of hours when you can do things, one advantage of your new building is that you have expanded hours. We, we had kind do. of odd hours before, not every day of the week, right. only certain times, hard to remember, easy to show up and find the door lock, but now? Yeah, so we're open six days a week. Uh, the exhibit hall is, uh, we're closed on Mondays. Still 11 to five for the most well, part. Closed on Mondays is a museum standard, right? Right, exactly. Uh, and the research library is also open more hours, uh, more days, it's five days a week. Uh, so the hours are on our website, but yes, we're much more accessible because of the expanded hours. So come in and look. Um, of course, we see the Tompkins Center for History and Culture as the foundation for Ithaca tours, heritage tours. Mm -hmm. So on Fridays during the summer at 4 o'clock, there's tours that leave from the building. They uh, sometimes are based on architectural history and sometimes on the people. Uh, so look for the schedule either on the History Center's website or on Historic Ithaca's website for these Friday tours at four o'clock. Perfect for bringing visitors from mm -hmm. out of town to join us. So I know that, that this, your current location makes that so much easier, doesn't right. it? To have right. a meeting point right there on right. the commons as opposed to in a kind of hard to find location? You know, we've already noticed, we knew that there would be much more foot traffic. Well, we've already noticed that in the less than two months that we've been open. People come in, uh, which, you know, they came in the old space as well, but not as in great numbers as now. But so not, we're delighted. not just happen to cross it. Now people walking right. around the commons will just see the sign and right. walk in and go, hey, I'm on. It's, uh, th that's it's what, a great That's location. what I heard that people do when I was there with you. They, they, they kind of wandered it. Are we allowed to come in here? Is this okay? You know, they're literally <clears throat> stumbling across it. And the other thing that we've noticed is folks, county residents, are taking great pride in this new space. They are amazed at the new space and you can already see that they're taking great pride in, and say oh I'm going to be sure that I bring visitors here so that's music to my ears I love that it is yeah um, we have a monthly program uh, so the next one for listeners would be in August on Sundays from seeds to wisdom exploring Haudenosaunee cycles so it's every I think it's the first Sunday of every month uh, on Sundays at uh, 1230, okay. uh, over the next nine months, there will be family and children's programs focused on Haudenosaunee and our indigenous culture. So I encourage people to come to those. You know, I have a suggestion for you about that. Because I noticed in the museum, you're actually using Haudenosaunee words, like mm -hmm. on the bathrooms, right. men and women. Right. And that's all well and good, but I, and it's not like I couldn't tell which was which, because you do have right. the English written right. next to it, too. But what I didn't know was, how do I pronounce this word? Yeah, we, that's a good point. We, if you There's listen... There's all these little, little symbols right. for pronunciation, we, but we, I don't know how... We'll how have to, to add that, because we do tell people how to say Gaakono, mm -hmm. which is how you say Kuga in the Kuga language, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't added that, so we'll have to include a yeah, little I think so because I noticed audio. I noticed that people really are into it. They right. want to learn. They want to learn these words. They want to participate and they want to uh, show that respect to the past and continuity to the past by right. learning these words. So but good point. If only I knew what all those little circles and squiggles meant for how to pronounce things. <laughs> By I the way, do down the road you can look for street signs on Cuga Street that oh, say really? Gaiacono. Uh, so we're in the process of working with the city of Ithaca to add some street signs. So stay tuned on that. So you mean Cuga Street will have an alternate, the, the, the a double sign, right, right. 
Wow. Uh, we occasionally work with Cornell Un University Press. We call them Cup Talks. Mm -hmm. So our next Cup Talk is on July 20th. It's, uh, the title is Public Universal, Universal Friend, Religion and Gender in the Era of the American Revolution mm -hmm. uh, by uh, Paul Moyer. It's a fascinating topic, this, this uh, Universal Friend. So come uh, and learn about this book. Uh, the, and there will be copies of the book for sale as well. So that's the next Cup Talk, mm -hmm. uh, again on July 20th. Uh, we encourage you you're to... Not gonna, you're not, you're not going to even give it any idea what that's about? What's uh, a universal friend? Well, it's... Or is uh, that, would that be letting the cat out of it's, the bag? It's, a, it's Jemima Wilkinson is the person that will be the focus. Mm -hmm. A very interesting, intricate story. So I'm going to leave it at that. All right, all right. So it's it's a it's a mystery. You gotta <laughs> if if you want to find out what it means, you gotta show up. Uh, how much does it cost to go? It's free. It's free. It's, it's free. free. Every, it's all free. these things are free. It's free. Uh, Henry Hinckley. Uh, some folks might have gone to the Hinckley Museum when it was open on Seneca Street, and then it closed over 20 years ago. Okay. So, so we're talking about be... folks who were here for a while, mm -hmm. but we're doing some special events uh, in memory of Henry Hinckley in partnership with both Lifelong and Historic Ithaca. Mm -hmm. uh, so just stay tuned uh, for some events uh, related to Henry Hinckley. Right, and these events are <laughs> happening at Lifelong, right? They're happening at different places, so oh. you really have to, some at the History Center, okay. uh, one might be at Cornell this fall, uh, a lecture in honor of Henry Hinckley, so it just depends. I wanna talk about the camp that's happening this summer. It's mm -hmm. got a great name, Cranky Camp. <laughs> Uh, it is happening <laughs> August 12th through 16th. That's why you send kids to camp, yeah. so they don't get cranky. cranky. camp. So it's, uh, I'm not the right person to talk about it, but it's an art form. I believe it's a Hungarian art form involving making puppets. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have the youth focus in on local history mm -hmm. and use puppets to tell some sort of storyline about our history. It's going to be at the Eight Square Schoolhouse, which also makes it fun. So again, that's August 12th through 16th, and there's more information on our website about that. Well, and that's going to be done with, with Lily Gershon, right? Who has Correct. been doing, she, she's been doing cranky performances herself, and she also had a whole, uh, a, a, an event which was anybody in the community, even if they've never done it before, adults could make their own cranky, and she would kind so of. So you know get, about it. So get, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen I've never them. Heard and about it's, it. it's just, it's, it's amazing. What's really amazing is that if you went to the performances that happened with the people that made these, everyone was so different. So it's not like uh, everybody sits down and there's a flower in the middle and everybody draws the flower and they all look kind of similar. Here, every, everybody's take on it could be in so many different directions. Well, plus there's so many different storylines that a youth might focus in right. on, which will guide whatever puppets they're going to make. So, cranky camp. Uh, you have to be, you're, I think you're too old. You have to be between nine to 13. But you don't actually have to be cranky. You do not have to be cranky. <laughs> Uh, so ages 9 through 13, call, and if you have any questions, Julia Taylor would be available to answer questions about okay. that. She's our education and coordinator. And one of the things we also want to talk about is that starting next month, we're doing this in July, but starting in mid-August mid or so for time for the students coming back, you're going to have your own show on Pegasus. Yeah, it's going to be really neat, a monthly new magazine-style format show that the History Center will put together. We're already talking about what the different regular components will be. Um, it's, it's really going to be fun. We're going to make sure we highlight an archive and a collection every time. We're going to ask trustees to share some sort of tidbit about our local history. We'll interview other partners at the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. So we're, we're delighted that Pegasus is interested in working with us on that. So stay tuned. As uh, Lauren said, sometime mid-August is when the first show will appear. And in the meantime, make sure you come to the History Center in Tompkins County at the Tompkins Center for History and Culture and explore our local history. Well, thank you, Rod. It's all been really, really interesting. And, and I, I think that you're probably going to get more and more great feedback. I and assume so. Yeah. Now, we, you know, be a little forgiving of us. We still have some filling in spots to do. So it's possible if you come and open a drawer, it might still be empty. But... Yeah, but Soon. you know, everybody that's going to walk into that museum now that is a local is still going to have in their mind the old history center. Right. And the difference is so night and day. It, it is so amazing. If you got one empty it? drawer, I don't think that's going to stop the jaw-dropping amazement of how wonderful it is. And we do want 
So I want you to come and record one of those stories in the Story Vault. You okay. have lots you can say about yeah. your connection to this place. Well, and we want everyone to do that. So. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's the best part about the History Center in Tompkins County is that it lets real people, local people, it's not just uh, General Sullivan that gets to be in history, it's regular people, and right. it's the people that were displaced by, from their homes that get to be in history now, too. Right. And that's the, such a big sea change in, in history, and you guys are really leading the, the charge well, thank on you. that. Thank you. Well, so, Rod, thank you very much. And all of you guys, what are you waiting for? Get down to the Tomp the Tompkins Center for History and Culture and check out the History Center in Tompkins County and its gorgeous new digs. And it's a vastly expanded hours. And get on the mailing list so that you can find out about all these great events. And, uh, and, and take everybody who visits you this summer to go see it. So thanks again for joining me. This is Lauren Stefanelli for Pegasus Presents. Good night.